All right, Slick, so what are we covering today in terms of years? Ooh, excellent. Let's do it. So here we are, Boil Room Studios, where I have the drum kit, I have the recording part, and I have the flags in the background. Of course, each flag represents some major bands that I was influenced by. Of course, the British flag, we got Motorhead, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, and of course, in Canada, we had, of course, Rush, Triumph, Max Webster, and so on and so on. And of course, in the American flag over there in the back there, uh, we had Kiss, Ted Nugent, um, Megadeth, Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer, and all those different genres. BB King, of course, for the blues and ZZ Top. As you can see, I'm wearing a ZZ Top shirt. So this is where it's this is where Planical music has been made for the last four years. But 14 years ago, when we moved in here, this is where it started with Boiler Room Studios and also getting the idea of getting music out there and playing. It took a while but it also has been a 40-year journey for me and this is why I'm doing this story. This is why I'm doing this documentary because I think it needs to be told that I came from somebody who had learning disabilities, overcame it because of music. Ten years old I heard Kiss Alive 2 for the first time and I said I gotta do this and I gotta do this for the rest of my life. I don't know how but it's going to happen and guess what? 40 years later I'm 54 right now and it's happened. I have made that happen. And this is the story on how I made that happen. Because you can't take the rock out of me. It's 0% talent and 110% passion, which is, what I think, is what makes you successful doing something creative like music, but especially with music. If you love it and you have the passion, you will stick it out and you'll make it happen. I did. 40 years later, there's something here to celebrate. And that's my story that I want to tell you. Okay, so, here's where I am right now, 2023, 40 years later. But where did it start? So, music for me has not only been an obsession, but is the thing that has saved my life so many times. But there are three things, three factors to music that is brought into my life for the last 40 years. One, I've had a learning disability since I was a kid and music rewired my brain, basically overcoming a lot of the learning disabilities. That's a true fact and that is also backed up by uh, scientific proof that I've seen now articles about of how that happened and how that works with your neurons and everything being tied together. The second thing is um, 1977, which is this episode actually, 1977 to 1982, a lot of significant things happened. The one big thing is in uh, December of 1977, my aunt, my Aunt Jackie, she bought me for Christmas an album called Kiss Alive 2. Yes, Kiss Alive 2 was the album that uh, that inspired me. That, uh, that, that uh, the very first song Detroit Rock City to put that on. It was a tape cassette, by the way. And I turned that on and it was like, holy crap, what is that? And whatever that is, I'm doing that for the rest of my life. So at 10 years old, I really knew that this was something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And guess what? It did happen because I'm sitting here right now, 40 years later, 2023, talking about this. So it's pretty amazing how one significant thing could change the whole course of your life and that did change the whole course of my life. Um, writing and recording music has been a savior for me because it's saved me so many times over the years, uh, especially in the last five years. Uh, it allowed me to uh, take that and be my outlet 
and it saved me. It saved me so many times. Oh my God, the music has been a savior for me. Um, and, you know, uh, I also play covers too, so I mean, there's a lot of influences from different bands and stuff, which we'll all get into over the, net, over the episodes in the different years of how those bands influenced me. But with KISS, Ah, it was it was just their everything. It was the music, especially the music, is what got me uh, hooked on on playing on and playing music. But also, just the imagery, the just the the attitude. It was the whole thing. Um, so there we go. In 1977, I was in Montreal. I was born in Montreal, 1967, and we, as a family, moved over to Toronto. Uh, specifically Brampton so it was like a big move and in 1978 I met a friend the very first actually the very first person I met in Brampton at a park at a school nearby my house it was uh, Jonathan McKittrick why is Jonathan McKittrick such a uh, important factor. Well, Jonathan McKittrick is the one that got me introduced to all the bands that I got influenced by and drove me to learning about more about music. Rush, Triumph, uh, Kiss, Motorhead, um, the rest of them uh, that I was introduced to. He was a big huge uh, contributor to my my music education in terms he, he pushed me a little bit on learning more about it. We were trying to write songs together. Now he never went through the whole music direction I did and uh, he was a big big part of that whole uh, whole trend and I appreciate that. I think that was something that uh, I'll uh, always appreciate forever and uh, and a good friend I still know him so it's, that's which is great which is you know basically 44 years <laughs> 44 years almost that I've known my friend Jonathan. Jonathan was also a big uh, contributor to uh, just introducing me to Rush. I mean, uh, Rush was in 81. Uh, you know, Lime Lime, Tom Sawyer, Moving Pictures, Exit Stage Left. So he, uh, he introduced me to a lot of that music and uh, really appreciate that. My mom, who is probably the most influential but also a very key ingredient to getting music introduced to me in my early life with the with the record player and just you know supporting me still to this day my mom who's 87 still like you know supports and and doesn't understand she hates loud music but she gets that this is something I'm not too bad at, and I, I do. My sister never got it. She didn't really understand the music that I liked, and she never really got it, but, eh, she's my sister. My big sister, who uh, tends to be very supportive and just loves that I have this thing that I do. So, uh, she doesn't get it, but, you know, as all sisters and big sisters, she's, she's, a, she's a great big sister, let's put it that way. Uh, she's a good person. Now, as for how I discovered Motorhead, great story. I actually traded in Kiss Alive 1, the vinyl, uh, for Motorhead, no, no Sleep Till Hammersmith. Best trade I ever did because when I heard Ace of Spades and, and just Palmer and the song Motorhead and Overkill, I'm going, oh man, this, this is awesome so I you know 80 1980 is when I started listening to Motorhead um, and discovered Motorhead I also discovered ZZ Top at around that time yeah 80 was when I heard T Tube Snake Boogie on the radio and I go whoever that is they're really cool so ZZ Top was a big big eye-opener too for bluesy type stuff BB King I started discovering BB King around 80 81 uh, through my friend Jonathan McKittrick who introduced me to a lot of bands uh, got me a lot of albums I taped a lot of albums uh, and just started learning about their songs and the music of that especially with Rush I mean 
you know, uh, 1981 um, moving pictures. I also discovered 2112. Uh, a lot of stuff with Rush was in the terms of drumming, and, and that was the big thing Jonathan would tell me about. Neil Peart, he's the guy, he's the, he's the drummer, along with Peter Chris, because Peter Chris, in his own way, was really unique and really good with the drumming. So uh, I remember that. That was a really good aspect of KISS. Each person had their own unique songwriting ability, vocals, but also just their musicianship. And, and, and especially Gene with his bass playing that influenced the crap out of me. I was, and and he, his voice, I was like liking his songs better than anybody else in the band. But, you know, all the other songs were great too. So um, that was my musical influences and journey throughout that time period. Didn't see anybody live, didn't go, that, that didn't happen until later where I saw my first concert. And I'll get to that in another episode. So at a really young age, I was think about three or four, uh, my parents realized something wasn't quite right. I wasn't uh, walking properly. I was always off balance and I was my coordination was awful. Plus my speech pattern and my speech wasn't very good either. So my mom and my dad took me to to a, to a therapist slash person who could diagnose uh, if I had learning disabilities, and I did. And uh, one of the things that they told my mom to do was to uh, get me a record player so I could do read and learn books, but also play music. This woman was brilliant, whoever advised my mom. She said, have them listen to music, all kinds of music. So she did. So in part of my doc for, for, uh, for 40 years, 2023, I'm honoring people. And one of the people, of course, I'm starting at the beginning because this is the 1977 episode. Um, it, is, it is my mom. My mom uh, has been influential and all through and still is. She's 87. And don't tell her I told you that, but she is 87 and uh, she's been, well, of course, not everybody says this, but in my case, I can say it. She's been the best mom ever and she, uh, she really, uh, she really supported me all through those years, but also in the beginning, it was because of her that got me that record player and got me introduced to music that that's where the adventure started. It really did start there with that, that whole aspect. And my dad, my dad being really supportive and also, you know, he, uh, he worked to pay for the, the therapy and the, and the help that I needed to overcome my learning disabilities. But music was one of those things that was the catalyst and the thing that rewired my brain. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this and spreading that story because it did help me. It saved me in so many instances too, musically. Uh, it saved me from a lot of places that wouldn't have been a good place for me to go uh, life-wise. But music saved me from that a lot, you know, through the hardships and all the other shit you go through. Music saved me from that and helped me. But more importantly, my mom started the adventure. She's the one that got me the record player and started having me learn what music was and, and uh, learning how to read better. So um, for my mom, how could you not love my mom for that? And so my mom is the, uh, is the reason I'm still doing what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So, um, and my dad who passed away in 2015 uh, was also the one that taught me about work ethic and, and sticking with it and not quitting. So, both of them actually. So there you go. Okay, so obviously from this episode 77 to 82, I was getting a lot of music influences and just hearing a lot of music from different bands and different genres. And one album that kind of said to me, I now gotta play, I gotta learn how to play guitar or bass or whatever, drums, <laughs> I wanted to learn something. And that was Kiss, uh, Creatures of the Night. Great album, really good shining moment for Eric Carr, who I thought was a solid drummer. Different from Peter Crisp, 
but solid, solid and an amazing drummer, an amazing drummer live too. I had seen him only once live and uh, just incredible, uh, great drummer. And the album itself, you know, I love it loud, War Machine, Killers, uh, Rock and Roll Hell, I mean, come on, I mean, the, the, the songs are endless on that album that are really good classic songs, you know, that are still played today. So that album was a huge, you know, huge inspiration to say, okay, I gotta learn how to play. I just didn't know how to do it. But coming up to December 1982, which was Christmas, and there again, my Aunt Jackie comes into play, um, I got a classical guitar, and I'm thinking, I don't know how to play this thing. And my parents said, well, you're going to learn how to play. So that's how it all started. December 25th, 1982, I got my first guitar, and it was an acoustic classical nylon string guitar. And yeah, it was like a, I have short little fingers, so the, the neck was wide, but it was a good way to start to learn how to play, and I learned everything on that guitar. So it was a it was a really significant moment, not knowing where that was going to take me, you know, up to uh, 2023. So there you go. Anyways, that's the story up to now. Stay tuned for the next episode for 1983. That was a big year. So, what so this is the famous Aunt Jackie. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that Aunt Jackie did was give me Kiss Alive 2 when I was at the age of 10. Do you even recall why you even bought that album? Do you remember? Why I bought that album? Yeah, do you remember what it was? Did you just go in the store and no, just buy something? No, I some? think, I don't know. I think you knew, I, I knew you liked loud music. And that was there you it. go. See? <laughs> I love so it. I picked that. I didn't know. So you know. picked that. You just didn't know that you so, just picked that, and it just ended up being the thing that made me play yeah, music for the next me, forty years and so crazy. on. That made yeah made everybody crazy, <laughs> crazy. including hey, my so parents. So now in, we're going to 1982 in oh God, in December, 1982. and I get a guitar because my aunt Jackie, as you know in the story that I say that I talk about, she gives me the classical guitar, which I then went and learned how to play music. Now with that one, how do you? Do you remember why the classical guitar? Like, how did you end up well, picking that? Well, I, I had classical guitar because I didn't know what, and I went to take guitar lessons, yeah. and it was classical guitar, and that's not what I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn, yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, so I would, it didn't have the right guitar for that. Okay. Okay. So you ended up with it. Oh, I don't know this. This oh, see, this is why I'm doing this because I didn't know this story. I thought you just bought it and no, it was a used guitar. Oh, okay. Hey, I've used used guitars <laughs> I think, except. I think I was paying like ten bucks a, a lesson, and after about four or five lessons, I decided that wasn't my kind of guitar playing. Oh. I didn't like it. And I ended up now. Why did it end up on me? Like how because did that? Because you already had that little plastic guitar I gave you. There you see, see, see how the connection. Yeah, and I had plastic guitars that I was mimicking. Not actually playing. And then it gets better after that, doesn't it? Oh well, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's what I used to learn from Mike Young on how to play guitar mm -hmm. for those four months. So I did not know this story about why I even yeah. got the classical guitar. Yeah. This is the first time I ever hear oh, about this, yeah, no, this yeah, version. Yeah, that, that. Me, I was going to go strum my guitar. It <laughs> didn't work out. <laughs> didn't work out. <laughs> so t tell the truth, when you hear Planet Cool Music, what do you hear? Oh, I hear my guitar. <laughs> I hear my guitar. You you have no idea what songs I do, right? No. No. Okay. That's okay. And you know what? I I listen to the words and then to me the music doesn't match the words. You mean spoil it again, bad? But you That's saw the lyric nice. video, right? Yes, I saw the lyrics. The lyrics are beautiful. Okay, the, but you don't see the connection between the con No. Oh, okay. Well, because that's okay. The, because the words Is it because it's too loud? Yeah. There you go. I've yeah, succeeded. Too loud. It's too loud. I love it. Too loud. And that's and the goal. I just went for an eye a ear exam. They told me I was I was a little bit deaf. And it's still too loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's still too loud. Yeah, so you can imagine, eh? Yeah. Mm. Well, you are the reason that I'm playing oh, for the I'm last the 40 years. Well, well, if it wasn't for you, I would have not gone to that next step. Uh -huh. And if I have never gotten Kiss Alive 2, eventually I would have learned about rock and roll 
but through something else. Yeah. So it came, it stayed within that, that realm. Oh, I wish you wouldn't meet our friend Rick. <laughs> I should have invited him today yeah. to, uh, oh, he's okay. crazy. So does Planet Cool Music rock? I'm going to send him your, uh, okay. your thing. Heavy rock for the rest of us. Say, plan, say Planet Cool Music rules. I'm doing mock to leash. What is it? Planet Cool Music. Planetcoolmusic.com. There you go. Mm. And say Planet Cool Music rocks. Planet Cool Music rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to pay for right that. I had feet. to pay for that advertisement. So, it anyways. rocks you right off your feet. <laughs> okay, well, and it's my nephew. You see, I have to say these things. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I love that. I love that. You're amazing. <laughs> it's my nephew. This yeah. is the Aunt Jack. There you go. We finally meet okay. the Aunt Jack. Okay, that's it. Bye. Cut. Okay, Sorry. cut. Bye bye. <laughs>